What is up YouTube, new scroll here. In this video, we're gonna be installing a couple gauges and we're gonna be installing an oil catch cam. So, let's get right to it. So as I mentioned in the past, I'm going to be deleting the stock CCV system because really, uh, it's not the best system in the world. And with the turbo, it's not really gonna work with my application. So I'm gonna be replacing that with the catch can and I'm actually not going to be rerouting lines back into the intake um, i'm actually going to be venting it to atmosphere really the main reason for that is i don't want oil getting back into the intake system so i'm going to be venting it to atmosphere so i need to figure out how to route this thing and where to mount it so let's do that so this is just a generic catch can off of amazon comes with some steel wool obviously the catch can uh, really nothing special about this not much baffling and some line which i'm not going to be using because i have some line that i will be using and some fittings and here's a look at the inside no baffling, really just this little piece right here. And what's nice is it has a dipstick, so that's cool. So there's a couple of places I was thinking about mounting this. The first one was a drug bin, but I don't really wanna route it over there because I don't have anywhere to route it to. Next to the intake, but really I think I'm settled on over here because I have more space. And I also have this stud from the stock intake. So that'll mount up something like that. But I do need to make a couple modifications. I need a spacer for this stud. And I also need to drill a hole on this to fit onto that stud. So this catch can uses 3 8 inch fittings and 3 8 inch hose. Unfortunately, the stock piece that comes off of the valve cover, I believe uses 3 quarter inch. So I need to adapt this hose all the way down to a 3 8 inch fitting. Now to start off, I have some 3 quarter inch line that I'm gonna use to go off of this fitting. From there, I'm gonna use this Dorman heater hose adapter to adapt this down to 5 8 inch, but that's not gonna be enough. I have some 5 8 inch hose that I'm only gonna be running a little bit of it because I have this adapter that's going to adapt it down all the way to 3 8 inch and I have some fresh hose for that. Obviously, everything is going to be linked down in the description. So just to recap, I'm coming off of the stock fitting that comes off the valve cover using some 3 quarter inch ID hose and then going down to a Dorman uh, heater hose adapter. This adapts it down from 3 quarter inch to 5 8 inch and then from 5 8 inch, obviously I have a little section here, I have that adapting down to 3 8 inch. So now the hose that comes off here will be able to go directly to the catch can. And just like that, she is in. So it's riding from valve cover underneath the manifold to here. I just need to put some hose clamps on here. And then this dumps right there. You see that? So ideally coming out of that line, it really should only be oil vapor. Um, but in the case that for some reason I have a lot of blow by or some oil makes it past the catch can, I'll know. And then I can be able to diagnose it from there. So now that my oil catch can is done, let's go ahead and move on and let's get these gauges installed. So I'm going to be running AEM's X-Series line of gauges. I'm going to be running a boost gauge and a wideband or AFR gauge. These come with most of the things that you need in order to install it. So like for the, the wideband, obviously it comes with a Bosch sensor, the harness or harnesses for the power and to run to the sensor. And then for the boost gauge, it comes with vacuum lines, a pressure sender, a T, which I'm probably not going to use, and a harness. The AM also comes with a O2 bung, which I didn't know about, so I'm not going to need this one. Now, as far as mounting goes, I was contemplating a couple ideas, uh, spent a good portion of 
yesterday trying to figure out where I or what my game plan is. Um, I thought about mounting it over here on top of the dash, uh, but uh, it's, I, I really don't want to drill into this and it's like well, the way the bracket works, it, it wouldn't work out. Um, obviously, eight pillars is an option. One company called ATI makes a gauge pod for the cluster, which I did not want to pay a hundred bucks for. Um, so really what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to mount it right here on like kind of kind of in the in the bezel of the the instrument cluster now i understand this is probably going to be blocking some some things uh but really all it's really going to be blocking is like that little icon for uh indica indicating if the cargos are open if there are any lights that are out and i believe this little box right here actually doesn't really show anything so i'm, I'm good there and it's covering a little bit of the speedo a little bit of the attack but i'm not too worried about that because Really, I shouldn't be looking at those anyway. So as far as mounting goes, I'm probably gonna be using double-sided tape because I really don't wanna be drilling into the dash for whatever reason. I'm not really convinced I'm not gonna stick with these gauges for a long time. Maybe a digital dash in the future. We'll try double-sided tape. We'll see if it works. So gauges are mounted with double-sided tape. Now I gotta route some of the harness. Uh, then what I'm, gonna, what I'm gonna do, I'm probably gonna run the harnesses down the sides of the steering column. So that AF or that boost cage is going to run down one side. This is going to run under the other and then meet inside the dash. That way I can have it go to different locations. Like I need one that needs to go to the firewall uh, so that I have a wire going to boost pressure. There's a grommet that's going to be like right here in the trans tunnel that I can use to route my wideband sensor harness. And then everything else needs to go to power, which obviously the fuse panel is right here. So I'm probably going to get an add a circuit and have that power the gauges so i have my vent already removed so i could sneak some wires going through here and through here and that way we could get some power to this thing So harness is routed, as you can see I have them coming down and they're, go they're going into the dash. The way I got the wires through, um, I basically took out my AC vent and I basically snaked the wires down through that way until I could see them and then I snaked the other ends over here. Two sets of wires or two sets of harness, these really just go to power and ground and this blue one is from the wideband that's going to go to a db9 connector so i can do some logging the wideband sensor harness also i pretty much did the same thing i had it come um up through the vent and then i stored all of the excess wire because there's a lot from that harness over here and then i had it snake down here and then to the trans tunnel as far as the boost pressure i ran a line under the dash and then base it to the ECU compartment. I took the ECU out as well as the tray and then there's a little spot right here that's open. I actually had to kind of break it a little bit or cut it so that I had enough room to fit the pressure sensor through. I used some fishing line and stuck it down there so I could tie it to this end that way I could pull it out. There's no way that I'm gonna get under the dash and try to get this through that hole because I don't wanna do that. So now that the harness is pretty much routed, it's time to get this thing wired up. I also need to tap into my intake manifold so I can get a boost pressure reference. And we need to hook up my DB9 connector so that we can do some logging. So let's do that. All right, so she's wired up. I got my ADA circuit right here to my cigarette lighter. Going up over here, I have it grounded to where the airbag used to be because airbags are for suckers. So yeah, both of them are grounded by the same pin and then I have my DB9 connector as pin per their wiring diagram. Come on, focus. So that's connected. Now let's tap the manifold. A drill bit breaks freaking drilling plastic. Oh, am 
might have tapped this a little too deep so if this doesn't seal with teflon tape i'm probably going to take it off and do epoxy so this grommet goes to the heat shield next to the brake booster right over here i'm going to take my pressure sensor and stick the bar through there that way it's nice and isolated it's not really hard mounted and i could get my line onto here and then get the plug onto here in the ecu compartment All right, so the manifold is back on. It's all tapped and ready to go. Everything is wired up. So let's take a look at these gauges and make sure everything is good to go. <laughs> every time. What do you mean every time? I do that often, actually. I think it's a background. Take two. So the gauges are working fine, all wired up, ready to go. I have my RS-232 cable connected and I have my boost pressure sensor connected. So that is it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. Stick around because hopefully in the next video, fingers crossed, we're going to take this thing off jack stands and we're going to go for a test drive.